Um, first of all, I think Rob already introduced me, so um, I'm Michal, I work for Rukus. What he didn't say is that my, uh, my main focus in, the, in our company is to work with the operators, uh, the ones that are interested in, in the integrated Wi-Fi with their, with their networks. Uh, so, hence the, the topic of this presentation, the integration of the Wi-Fi with the, with the packet core, which would be the mobile operator uh, network. Um, first off, I would like to, you know, like bring up why do we even care, why do we even talk about this topic? And uh, actually, obviously, the operators currently, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, or always, they have the, the challenges in front of them that are coming from the, you know, increased traffic into their network or, or uh, you know, they, they struggle with the with, uh, spectrum deficit that was already, I think, discussed with Jamie in his presentation before the, the launch. So I don't want to dwell on this for too long. What I want to add to this is that, you know, on the other side, uh, apart from the mobile operators, the, the fixed line operators, they also um, recognize that they need to, you know, uh, that they, uh, they cannot only stay in the business of fixed line anymore. They want to go mobile and typically they do not own the spectrum. So, you know, uh, nonetheless, they are trying to become an MVNO. They are building their own, uh, uh, you know, packet core. They are trying to uh, start selling SIMs and they want to go mobile. Um, and all of those operators, they have uh, some opportunities in front of them that are, that are being, uh, that are coming out from, let's say, our market and developments in the Wi-Fi space, especially with the, you know, hotspot uh, 2.0 uh, um, and, you know, standardization and, and roaming agreements with, with the Wi-Fi calling that is big for the last few years since, uh, you know, introduction of this, uh, of this onto the uh, end devices. And they also have other, you know, opportunities with, uh, with uh, data mining on the um, information coming from the Wi-Fi piece that can, you know, utilize to somewhat uh, monetize on their, on their operations. So what we see, and, and I think it's, uh, it's just factual, is that one way or the other, they will look into the Wi-Fi as a, um, maybe a complementary radio technology to their current uh, macro networks. Obviously, they will look at, at, at small cells, they will look at uh, other technologies, but Wi-Fi is, is part of it. And we are actually seeing for quite some time that, that uh, operators are interested in integrating it all together. So the integration models, and, and here is the reference for the free GPP uh, you know, document that describes uh, very well the architecture for it. Uh, it's a document of 300 pages. I only have, I think, eight minutes left. So let me just fish out a few important points out of this document and present in next two slides. Um, uh, a look at the di you know, diagram of the network, just a very high level. On the right-hand side, we have a mobile core. So mobile core is, um, this is a service platform basically for the operator where all the packet services are being terminated on and delivered to the end user. Mobile core has many different uh, you know, entities, but the important ones that you need to uh, first uh, learn and understand are the, the packet gateway, the one in the middle, that is a, a termination point. Where this is where the IP address is allocated, when the policies are, are um, applied and may be enforced and the traffic is sent off to internet. Another important point or, or, or entity here is the, or even more important, is the HLR HSS. Uh, so this is the user database. This is the database where we will we are going to authenticate our user against. Uh, so, uh, you know, on the, um, and, and I drew some run here just for, uh, you know, to complete the picture, but it's irrelevant for this uh, discussion. The important point, part is the, the Wi-Fi access points, right, the island on the, on the bottom left. And this is, you know, from the free GPP perspective, this is perceived and called as the non-free GPP access. You know, it's like a legal, legal alien in America, right? When I come, I'm a legal alien. So it's like, uh, it's not a free GPP access. It's legal, but it's still an alien. Anyway, what we need to, uh, to bring this all together, it's a um, device or a function that is called wireless access gateway, or more specifically, trusted wireless access gateway in this picture. So, so again, for this model, it's called trusted. It means that the operator is actually using um, its own SSID or its own um, way to authenticate the user. Frankly, it doesn't need to be operator access point. Uh, as soon as they have uh, struck some deal with the, per, with the provider this, that offers the SSID, they just make sure that this SSID is of a certain type that allows them for the user authentication. So it could be 802.1x or hotspot 2.0, 
where we can utilize any of the SIP, uh, sorry, EAP uh, protocols to, um, to get the user authenticated over the network. Um, and it could be, you know, all of the types depending on the SIM, uh, SIM uh, card. Now, the, what happens is that the user credentials are in the database on the very right uh, of this picture, uh, while the access point is using RADIUS protocol for starting this authentication. So the gateway is our stitching point, right, uh, or the demarcation point between the access, uh, Wi-Fi access and the mobile core needs to support this authentication. And what it does, it could actually directly talk to the HLR HSS, but these systems, they talk MAP protocols. There's like old SS7 you know, protocol, if you ever remember. And uh, many operators, they don't want to have a, a non-free GPP device to actually touching their uh, database directly. So what they say instead, uh, we have defined in our free GPP specs and a radio server that is free GPP compliant radio server that supports free GPP call flows. And then we will utilize this as an intermediate uh, step stone for authenticating the user. So the WAC is going to send its uh, you know, uh, 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 radius accept to this uh, AAA um, with um, giving the, um, the AAA the additional information about the user, so not a username and password, but MSISDN, which is essentially the phone number, or IMSI, that is the unique identifier for the, uh, for the SIM card, right? that consists of the, met um, uh, and the operator code, the network code, and the, the ID of the SIM. So once all this is set to the HLR, the system as a user is authenticated and the vectors are returned for the WAG. And then next thing, what happened is that WAG is trying to uh, build a tunnel towards the gateway to have the traffic, uh, the ability to have a traffic sent to the gateway. So this is a GTP tunnel. It's again a handshake or a procedure that is well described in the, in the free GPP uh, uh, specs. But this is the one that we need to utilize all those information about the user to bring the tunnel for him to then the user get an IP address and finally get onboarded onto this packet core network. Once this has happened, the traffic could be sent off to any of the IMS system servers or the, the internet, which is here the SGI interface to the bottom. Sometimes the operator may decide actually not to pull the traffic over into his packet core. Because basically, if he does that, he will need to increase the capacity on the packet core. So instead, the operator, after authenticating the user and applying policy, will decide to actually load the traffic off or break the traffic off locally from the WAC even if before it hits the, it hits the, the packet core itself. Right? So all this is uh, called a uh, trusted non-free GPP access to the packet core, but some people also like to refer to this as a, as a Wi-Fi offload or 3G offload. This is why it is in the picture. Second model. We come back to this uh, diagram with no lines. Um, second model is called an untrusted access. Basically, this means that now our SSID or, or our uh, access points are not necessarily controlled by us, and there is an authentication going that is not really um, in hands of the operator. So you are coming into the public hotspot, you are going authenticated or not, you know, in this uh, wherever place you are but you still would like to get the services provided by the operator coming from the packet core. So in this case, we need a new entity. It is called uh, Evolve Packet Data Network, or EPDG. And EPDG basically is going to now terminate the tunnels from the user that needs to be secure. So this is IPsec tunnels specifically. And bring the tunnel up to the uh, P gateway to have the uh, traffic sent off to, again, the P gateway that is a core of the, of the delivering of the data services. Hence the definition of this SWU interface, which uh, again is an um, it's an uh, it's clearly IPsec. The authentication for the tunnel is using uh, IGv2, which is then coming from the EPDG to the AAA again free GPP compliant AAA and to um, to authenticate the user against the HLR HSS. Once all this done, this this tunnel setup on the left hand side. Uh, will actually trigger also the channel, tunnel setup, setup from the EPDG over the S2B interface to the P gateway. Again, S2B, S2A, this is all GTP. There are actually definitions for, for other protocols like uh, PMIP, but, but uh, you know, uh, I don't know the operator that uses PMIP. You can help me with this, if any. So, so this is a second model, an untrusted. And clearly, it's just uh, the IPsec tunnel is actually coming straight from our device towards the EPDG. Because the network that is underlying uh, 
uh, transport network, the, including the Wi-Fi, is not a trusted network by the operator. Very well, so the summary. Uh, this integration is, is, is actually going for a couple of years. Uh, I, I spent more than three years uh, working with the operators on this, so it is not a, a new thing. It's uh, quite complex for the reason that uh, everything you know, to do with the free GPP world is complex. They have like uh, loads of documents and hundreds of pages of definitions for the interfaces and all those convoluted abbreviations to remember. But in the end, uh, we need to understand it a little bit better to work with the operator and go from very complex to, to rather simple. As I was trying to show in those other diagrams, there are few stitching points, right? There is an authentication, there is a traffic forwarding. That's a minimum. So we need to you know, be able to, um, to work with them on these parts. Those two models, uh, again, the, the 300 pages you are going to read tonight before or after the beer, it's, going, it's just summarizing two models, but obviously there is more to it. There is a, a policy control part, there is a, a charging part that is very important. There is a, a QoS part that by itself can take few, you know, a few hours of reading. Uh, but trusted or untrusted, this is the way to go. Now, the integration, as I was trying to say in the beginning, they, they are actually allowing for new services, but also they are being driven by new services. So the fact that, you know, iPhone, sorry, Apple has introduced Wi-Fi calling with IPsec two years back, they triggered operators to immediately have this all rolled out. And I remember being in Spain one and a half year ago with my, oper with my American friend who was doing a Wi-Fi calling. So it's like, you know what? Now I can talk for two hours with my wife for free, right? So he was so happy because I was ro roaming charges from from US to Europe was just terrible. And finally, you know, it is not going smooth, very smooth. It is going smooth only when we go to and, and figure our tools what are necessary, right? So we need to uh, make sure that the WAG supports all the parts of the free GPP, that the free GPP part supports what we are supposed to receive, that the QoS works end to end. So actually it touches access point, hence the access point needs to be able to support it that the configuration for the Wi-Fi calling touches access point. So basically, we need to add a lot of additional um, tools on our Wi-Fi network to make the, info, uh, the integration happen, but this is basically what we do. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yes, please. Go ahead and uh, swap up and while you're getting the question done. Uh, are both models for voice calls? I thought Wi-Fi calling is only for voice. Uh, so the first model is actually for any data. Yeah. And, and once the data hits the, the packet core, that actually there are those IMS services that I draw in the picture that could be also providing the call for the operator. Mm -hmm. so, this, so if the operator uh, deploys the trusted model and controls the authentication and controls of, of the UE, then it will probably not look necessary for the voice calling with EPDG, because then it is like a, a tunnel over tunnel. Right? Yeah. It doesn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. So the operator will build in some parts their own SSIDs, controlled access point SSIDs, and they will provide voice services through regular IMS. And other parts, when they do not own the network, they use EPDG as an entry point for the voice services. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, another question, if it's possible. Um, the small cell solution would be a third approach. Uh, so it, it is, uh, well, small cell is coming around the corner. I think somebody said it as well in the presentation before. It's irrelated, right, yeah. for, for this matter. I mean, small cell is like a uh, an, an, an sort of macro network in unlicensed band, and they are still deciding what is really the, the band and where it could be used. I mean, it's very popular. Discussion is popular in US or Japan. Mm -hmm. But I think in Europe, it turns out to be different. Anyway, for us, we are just talking here regular Wi-Fi, right? Like, like unlicensed 2.45, whatever we know, and the way how to get it, how, the, how to get traffic and the user on board it onto the packet core of the operator, you know, with, uh, with the smooth way, right? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And we can discuss more uh, over the beer.